Welcome to section 7, which is dilations. This is the last video of the chapter and the last video of semester 1. That's nice because we're getting to the end of the semester, but on the other hand, do know that your chapter 6 test is coming up and the final. There are two objectives for today's video. We're going to determine if a figure is a result of a reduction or an enlargement, and then we're going to determine the scale factor. So this entire section is about dilations. This chapter we've learned about similar figures. So dilations are transformations that create similar figures. So a dilation is a transformation that creates a figure similar to the original figure. So there's a whole bunch of different dilations. We could take a figure and we could move it, we could take a figure and we could reflect it, or we could take a figure and we could make it bigger or shrink it. So specifically, we're going to be looking at um, enlarging or reducing. So we're going to be looking at taking a figure and blowing it up or shrinking it down. So we do that using what's called a scale factor. So if the scale factor is between 0 and 1, we have what's called a reduction. So we are making our figure smaller. If our scale factor is bigger than 1, we have an enlargement. So we're making our figure bigger. So let's look at example number 1 so we can be a little more specific. It says draw a dilation of quadrilateral ABCD with the vertices A, B, C, and D. Use a scale factor of 2. Okay, first thing that I want you to do is actually plot A, B, C, D. So A is 2, 1, which is about here. B is 4, 1. C is 4, negative 1. And D is 1, negative 1. Okay, so this is A, B, C, D. Okay, so that's our original figure. Now it says use a scale factor of 2. So scale factor of 2, 2 is greater than 1, which means that we have an enlargement. So we are making our figure bigger. In order to find the vertices of the new figure of the dilation, all we do is we multiply our current figure by the scale factor. So I'm going to multiply all those vertices by 2, by the scale factor. So my dilation, I'm going to put a prime, would be 4, 2. So I'm multiplying 2, 1 by 2. So B prime, anytime that you put that prime, it just means that you have a dilation. So for B prime, I'm going to take 4, 1 and multiply it by 2. So that would be 8, 2. Similarly, for C prime, I'm going to take 4, negative 1 and multiply it by 2. So that's going to be 8, negative 2. And then D prime, similarly, would be 2, negative 2. Okay, so now I'm going to graph the dilation in red, the enlargement in red. So A prime is 4, 2, which is here. B prime is 8, 2. C prime is 8, negative 2. And then D prime is 2, negative 2. Okay, so what you're going to notice is that we took our original figure, the figure in blue, and then we blew it up. We multiplied everything by a scale factor of 2, so we enlarged our original figure. In the process, it also shifted the figure over a little bit. Okay, so let's look at example number 2. It says you want to create a quadrilateral EFGH that is similar to the quadrilateral PQRS. What are the coordinates of H? Okay, so we have E, F, G, H, that is similar to P, Q, R, S. Okay, now from this statement, we know that E goes to P, F goes to Q, G goes to R, and H goes to S. So from our figure, let's figure out what all of those coordinates are. Point E is right here, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. That's going to go to point P. Point P is 3, 0. 
F is the point 3, 3. That's going to go to Q, which is 1, 1. G is the point 0, 6. And that's going to go to point R, which is 0, 2. Point H, I don't have. But that goes to point S. And point S is 4, 5. Okay, so in order to find our point H, we need to know what the scale factor is. So I took all the coordinates of EFGH and I multiplied by some number to get PQRS. So how do you get from 3 to 9? Well, I had to multiply by 3. How do I get from 1 to 3 and 1 to 3 again? Well, I had to multiply by 3. How do I get from 2 to 6? Well, I had to multiply by 3. So you should be able to tell, to go from the blue figure to the red figure, I had to multiply by 3. So to go from this figure to this figure, I'm going to have to multiply by 3. So 4 multiplied by 3 would give me 12. 5 multiplied by 3 would give me 15. So h is going to be the point 12, 15. Okay, so that's off the graph, but that's somewhere up here, h. Now, if I finish this red figure, does this red figure look like the blue figure? Well, yes, it does. It looks like I took the blue figure and I blew it up to get the red figure, which makes sense. I'm multiplying by 3 every time. Multiplying by 3 is going to make a figure bigger, so it's an enlargement. So the coordinates of h are 12, 15. Okay, so let's flip the page to look at another example. Okay, so example number three says, draw a dilation of the polygon with vertices A, B, C, and a scale factor of 3 over 5. So right now, pause the video and try example three on your own, please. If you forgot how to do this, look back at example number one. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So first thing I want you to do is draw this polygon ABC. So A is negative 5, 5, which is right here. B is negative 5, negative 10, which is here. And C is 10, 0, which is right here. Safe to assume that this is a triangle because that's the only three-sided figure. Now we're told that we have a scale factor of 3 over 5. So what you should have done is taken all of your coordinates and multiply them by 3 over 5. So a prime is going to be negative 5 multiplied by 3 over 5. As a reminder, negative 5 times 3 over 5. This is like negative 5 over 1. So this is going to be negative 15 over 5, which is negative 3. 5 times 3 over 5. This is like 5 over 1, which is 15 over 5 which is 3. Got to erase this so I have some more room. B prime then similarly is negative 3 comma 6 and C prime is 6 comma 0. So now let's graph this. A prime negative 3 3 is right here. B prime is n negative 3 negative 6. right here and then C prime is 6 0 just right here and then connecting we get this triangle so I need to ask myself does this make sense a scale factor of 3 over 5 that's between 0 and 1 so I should be shrinking my figure which is the case here I took the red figure and I shrunk it to get that blue figure so this was a reduction um, and then the figures look similar so that's good okay so example number four says, find the scale factor from triangle ABC to triangle DEF. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mark all these coordinates. So D is the point 2, negative 2. F is the point 4, negative 2. And E is the point 4, 1. A is the point 4, negative 4. C is the point 8, negative 4. And B is the point 8, comma 2. Okay. 
So from A, B, C to E, E, F, to D, E, F, I know that A went to D, B went to E, and C went to F. Okay, so A is the point 4 comma negative 4, and that went to 2 comma negative 2. B is 8, 2, and 8, 2 went to 4, 1. And lastly, 8, negative 4 went to 4, negative 2. One point I forgot to mention, it says the scale factor from ABC to DEF. That tells me ABC has to come first, and then DEF has to come second. Okay, so how do I get from 4 to 2 and negative 4 to negative 2? Well, I divide by 2. Scale factor is always multiply, though. So rather than dividing by 2, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Now, 8 multiplied by 1 half is 4. 1 half of 2 is 1. So my scale factor k in this case is 1 half. And that should make sense. If I'm going from a, b, c to d, e, f, this is a reduction. My figure is getting smaller, so my k value should be between 0 and 1. Now, if you can't just figure out by looking at the numbers how to get from 4 to 2, what you also can do is you can divide. So I can divide... 2 by 4, so 2 divided by 4 will give me 1 half. Negative 2 divided by negative 4 will give me 1 half. 4 divided by 8 will give me 1 half. And then always make sure that your answer makes sense in terms of having a reduction or an enlargement. So example number 5, this is yours to do. Pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Okay, so let's see how we did. It says find the scale factor from triangle DEO to triangle ABO. That tells us that D goes to A, E goes to B, and O stays at O. Okay, so point D is 0, 3, and that went to 0, 4. E is the point 6 comma 0 and that went to 8 comma 0 and 0 comma 0 just stayed at 0 comma 0. Okay, so I need to think how do I get from 3 to 4? Well, you might not be able to remember that in your head, so let's divide. So I get 3 over 4. Now, does this make sense? If I have a, a scale factor or a k value of 3 over 4, I should have a reduction. If I'm going from DEO to ABO, is this the reduction? The blue to the red, is this the reduction? Well, no, it's an enlargement. I'm getting bigger. So instead, I need to flip these. So my K value is 4 over 3. So similarly, 8 divided by 6 will give me, sorry, 8 divided by 6 will give me 4 thirds. To check that, 6 times 4 thirds is 24 over 3, which is 8. So to go from 6 to 8, I have to multiply by 4 thirds. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, that's okay. Please correct your work. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask me in class tomorrow. Let's flip the page, please. Okay, so did we accomplish the objective? First objective was to determine if a figure is a reduction or an enlargement, and then we also wanted to determine the scale factor. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking this extra example number one. So what I want you to do is I want you to draw ABC, and then I want you to draw the dilation that has a scale factor of two. I'm going to be checking tomorrow to make sure this problem is done as well as the rest of the notes. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down. Good luck.